the early 1980s, Coconut, a pioneering technology and consumer retail company, introduced the world to the future of delivery, drones. With promises of convenience and efficiency, they revolutionized how goods reached our doorsteps, for a time anyway. Coconut, coconut, fruit straight to your face. In 1982, after a meteoric rise as a direct-to-consumer produce distributor, and we'll bring you fruit each day. Coconut keeps you fruity. The fruit business had been effectively conquered, and CEO Jeffrey Nutter was looking for a way to push his business to new heights. Coconut expanded to consumer electronics with the Coconut Fruity X2 personal computer and helped pioneer the internet in a genius ploy to further accelerate produce sales. It was called, of course, the Coconut. But no one could have guessed the next stop for Coconut would be global retail domination. Coconut began delivering all sorts of home goods via radio-controlled drone in Southern California. Within 18 months, Coconut, fueled by stock market mania, expanded and quickly came to control one-third of the American economy. Distribution centers were popping up everywhere, and coconut drones filled the skies. It was amazing. Like magic, the packages just appeared on my doorstep. I loved coconut. No more, like, waiting in lines or dealing with other human beings, or even, like, letting strangers near my property. It was super fantastic while it lasted. But with the promise of every innovation comes unforeseen consequences. Reports of accidents involving coconut drones began to surface, just whispers at first, urban legends in the ether of a fledgling 80s World Wide Web. But soon, reports of the accidents began making national news. And that's when the grim horror truly began to crash down to Earth. A family of four was killed when a coconut drone dropped a payload through their windshield. Tragedy strikes on the New Jersey Turnpike as a coconut drone crashes, causing a massive pileup. A teenager's fingers were gruesomely sawed off by the propeller of a drone at Cedar Creek High School today. It happened as he tried to throw a pass at his football practice. Tune in to News Channel 9 at 10 for all the gory details. A dark storm was gathering in Coconut's once sunny skies. Coconut's stunning flight was finally grounded when little Timmy Gilmore was crushed by an industrial-sized <coughs> delivery of Pop-Tarts in his driveway in a peaceful suburban neighborhood. To Coconut and its CEO, Jeffrey Nutter, I ask this. How can you assure the safety of the public when your drones are causing chaos on our highways and deaths in our suburban yards? I say it's time for Coconut to fall out of the sky for good. My fellow Americans, we cannot sacrifice the safety of our citizens for the sake of convenience. Therefore, I have signed an executive order to cease all drone delivery services by coconut immediately until further laws are implemented by Congress. Any coconut drones in the air after 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will be brought down with extreme prejudice. God bless you all, and God bless America. Just like that, coconut's ambitious vision came down to earth in a fiery ball of metal cardboard, legislation, and Pop-Tarts. The era of home drone delivery came to an abrupt end, leaving behind a cautionary tale of technological advancement. Technology was advancing faster than regulations could keep up, and safety protocols were overlooked in the pursuit of profit. In retrospect, it seems obvious that huge hunks of metal hovering over people's homes is an objectively terrible idea, but we just didn't see it at the time. After the collapse of Coconut, its founder and CEO, Jeffrey Nutter, blew himself up when he tried to launch a commercial space tourism company. Today, the Nutter family conquers the moon. But that's a tale for another exciting episode of Neon Nostalgia. Join us next time to learn about stuff that didn't happen. And thank you.